men in predatory reproductive mode leave paternally imprinted genes in favor of embryonic development. Is predatory mode genetically determined? What genes will men with predatory inheritance but using investment strategy leave? How can genes know the dad's intent in the moment of the act? Does dad even know? Thanks for all. Love you both. Keep it up. So this is from Echo. This is in response to mm -hmm. you You know immediately. Um, I think it was in the last Q&A we were talking about um, genomic imprinting and the idea that uh, a, a, a baby um, is – a baby's genome actually keeps track, keeps track as if it's conscious, which of course it's not, of which parent um, various copies of the genes came from and that maternally imprinted genes, for instance, tend to put the brakes on excess pulling of resources from mom and making the head too big before birth, whereas paternally imprinted genes um, tend to try to pull more resources from mom. And, um, you had specifically been talking about mating system perhaps being a mitigating factor here. And the question here is, well, how, how are the, the genes that might be paternally imprinted going to keep track of or know what, you know, what, what kind of mating system dad is in? Um, well, the answer to that might be things like, um, you know, keeping track of different kinds of sperm that are showing up in, in the mom, but, um, also, you know, how do, like, regardless of what kind of mating system um, in general, like what about the individual man and his intentions? How how could a paternally imprinted gene possibly know? No. Well, I mean, look, so there's a question about what we know, mm -hmm. and I don't know the answer to the question about how it's done, but I do, yeah. want, I do want to correct one thing. Okay. I am somewhat dubious that head size would be downstream of uh, a imprinted gene because the baby in question, that is to say, the offspring of the male has every interest in the mother surviving birth because it is very unlikely to survive if the mother dies in childbirth. Yeah, that's so, true. I, I, I don't think I made that up, but I don't have the reference. At I'm my just saying it, it yeah. could be, but there's going to have to be some sort of subtle logic to make that sure. work. But in yeah. general, the logic is that a... Uh, a father's genes, if a father is not sticking with the mother, in other words, if this is the only offspring of his that she is going to bear, mm -hmm. then his interest in her distributing her resources across her entire brood is lower, right? right? So uh, th anyway, there's a lot of really important stuff downstream from that uh, logic, and that but logic to, is very robust. Right. But to what degree can social system and mating system actually – can – Genomic imprinting actually be informed by the mating system in which the players live. Right. And so this is why I want to say what we need is a proof of concept, right? Mm -hmm. We need a demonstration that something mechanistic can do the job yeah. um, rather than a demonstration of what it is that does the job, right? So what I would argue is, for example, there are A, uh, courting is a ritual enforced by females to make sure males are actually interested in commitment. That is to say, if it takes uh, months to end up engaging in reproductive behavior with somebody, that's a, that's a long con and a very expensive one for a male to engage in if he's just going to flee. Right. Whereas it's a test, not just of intention, but of actual stability. Like even if you really want to be able to stay with her, if, you, if everything in your world is constantly in chaos, she's going to see that at some point. Right. And, you know, and this, and this, what you just said about courtship, you know, this, but you know, like I, I discovered courtship in these little tiny poison frogs that I right. studied, right? Like, you know, courtship has a role to play across any, any sexually reproducing organism in which there is going to be parental care by both players. Right. So given that, mm -hmm. and given that there are physiological changes that accompany the state of mind that result in extended courtship, mm -hmm. in other words, a person in love is in a physiologically different state, mm -hmm. right? That physiological different state we mm -hmm. now know has chemical signatures. So okay. could those chemical signatures Good. be used to imprint the... Oh, careful, imprint, imprint isn't quite what you... No, I think I do mean imprint. 
In other words, if a male is going to produce during his lifetime two different kinds of sperm, right? Those that accompany a, a fleeting relationship in which he intends to invest nothing and therefore his interests are uh, in that offspring taking as much resources it can safely get from the mother and not saving any for his, mm. uh, his offspring's half-siblings. Or a relationship in which he intends to invest, in which case his interests are very symmetrical with hers, then the point is the presence or absence of those chemicals that come along with uh, with love mm. could be uh, used to basically turn on and off different genes, right? Just the same way the whole argument depends... So I think it's not exactly imprinting, but like a tag, like a... a <clears throat> Like a vasopressin mediated epigenetic tag there you go. on sperm uh, that indicate, you know, in love or not. Right. Now, I would argue yeah. this is an exact analog for what we imagine happens in the case where a gene just simply decides whether it comes from the male parent or the female right. parent, right? Which is the usual meaning of imprinting. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, whether yeah, or not separate from the other meaning that most people have of imprinting, of like a, a, the duck sees the Conrad Lorenz right. and imprints on him as his mom. Yep. Yep. Um, so anyway, proof of concept. It's very easy yeah, to build good. a system that can recognize mm -hmm. these things and and uh, react differently without changing the underlying genetic sequences. Is the point? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like it.